All right. Um, welcome to part uh, six of Maxwell Render Basics, where we looked at, uh, this is a short video looking at just how to make a simple animation. Um, and the file we're working with is this uh, simple animation.3dm, which I will provide um, on the course module as well. So very simple. Uh, I have this thing, which is, I guess, uh, it's actually on a locked layer. Let me see. Yeah, it's on a locked layer. These are all locked just so I don't, you know, drag anything by accident. Um, but there's an armature of like some sort of construct, and then there's a big sort of, you know, purple ball, which I've applied to this sort of cherry car paint uh, texture too. Um, and there's two curves. These curves, um, even though right now they're three-dimensional, but originally I just sort of drew them in the ground and then used the um, F10 uh, edit points command to kind of move, you know, the sort of path into place, right? Very simple. So you can actually kind of like do this, draw these sort of trajectories in the top view and then just sort of adjust their uh, heights or elevations after the fact. So. One of these is going to be, and you can actually set it to a point as well if you want, but one of these is going to be, if you kind of imagine this, the path as the path of the camera, and then this uh, as the path of the camera dolly or the camera uh, target, actually. So um, these are using, on the very end, you'll see here uh, the animation tools um, for Rhino. Um, and these are very simple, rudimentary, and you can kind of pull these out if you want, animation setup to click on the sort of lower right corner of the uh, flyers to just pull out and that's record. So this is it. Um, you can actually set up a sun study. I'm gonna show that here, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, fly through, uh, which is, I felt, I feel is harder to control. Uh, this is the one we're using, uh, path animation. The 360 turntable animation is dumb and stupid. It just does, it sort of rotates like that, more or less. Um, so, you know, you can try that if you want. But this is the one. So with these two paths drawn, uh, all you have to do is click here, and it'll ask you for to select a camera path curve or point. So that, and note that it says point, so you can actually import a point if you want. So if you want your camera to be stationary, but have it pan across, then you can use a point as the camera point, and then have a path as a sort of camera path, right? So these are interchangeable. Then it asks you to select target path curve or point. So this is the target path curve. And then it bumps up this. So you can set animation number of frames. You know, remember, you know, generally animations have to be at least 30 frames per second. Um, you know, there are just some different standards that do 29.7 or whatever, but 30 frames per second is the, you know, generally what's accepted. So if you want four seconds of animation, um, then you need, you know, four times 30, 120 frames, basically, right? Save as PNG. Capture method is important. We'll look at that in viewport is perspective. So the capture method right now uh, is set to shaded, which is our shaded sort of viewport. These are, you know, x-ray, ghosted, blah, blah, right? This is basically, and if you say, okay, you know, that just gives you the setting. Now I can use this preview just to kind of preview what it would look like. Right? Okay, so that's what the animation would look like. I can go to the first frame, and that's the sort of angle of the first frame. I can slowly forward it through. Now, if I wanted to, uh, or I can go to the last frame, and that's the last frame. Right? Could be, you know, Straightforward, you can click on this to set a number. So I want to go to frame 60. Okay, this is frame 60. All right, now you'll notice I have the safe frames here uh, on uh, because, especially for a um, animation, if I go to the scene manager, um, you do not want your rendering to be too big. Uh, generally, like to kind of keep things manageable, unless you want this to run for a long, long time, right? You can generally estimate what the Sort of single frame is. I have this set right now. Um, actually, this is set to viewport. It shouldn't be. Um, you should probably set to something small like 600 or 800, 600, something small because you want your uh, 
sort of render an output to be fast. Well, each frame, you know, to take, for example, let's say each frame takes 10 seconds, right? You have 120 frames, that's, you know, 1200 uh, seconds divided 60. So that's already 20 minutes to do a simple animation. Now, for the most part, it probably won't be uh, 10 seconds. That kind of depends here uh, on your output setting, what your SL um, is set to, right? Um, so right now, I have my SL set to 10, right? So it means, you know, let's say each frame takes one minute to render. 120 frames is still 120 minutes, two hours. Right, so you want to be careful with this. Like you know, your SL setting can't be too high. It has to be reasonably low so that each frame doesn't take overly long to render. Okay, all right. So I just showed you basically how to set uh, an animation up, but eventually when you want to record it or kind of send it to render, this is what you have to do. Now remember when we set up the animation, we selected shaded. And that's why when I do this, it asks me to say, oh, enter start recording target folder. So let's uh, find a target folder on my desktop. Animate and say, okay. And uh, I will enter to start recording. And it basically kind of goes through. And if I open my animate folder at the same time, you'll see it's basically saving all of these uh, in this case, they're just screen captures, right? So, you know, actually within the sort of Rhino viewports, uh, for example, if you want to set this to, you know, like the sort of pen style, and you can you can actually make a pretty sort of uh, nifty without rendering, right? You can make a sort of pretty nifty like um, sort of line, white and, white and black line animation, right? If you wanted to. Um, but that would be sort of based off of, you know, one of these uh, view styles, right? Okay, now let's say, so here uh, in the enemy folder, I have like 0 to 119, 190 frames, and they're basically, you know, those screen grabs. Okay, so uh, let's go through that setup really quickly again. So we set up a path animation, select camera curve and then select a target path curve or point and this time let's use a point uh, PNG 120 frames render full right so which basically forces it to use our chosen render engine perspective animation say okay so that's set up now uh, before we go any further let's check and make sure in our um, scene manager what you want to do is go to your camera and make sure your export sort of resolution is something smaller so that this will render faster. I'm going to make this actually 320. Pardon me. I'm going to make this actually 32240, make it really small um, just so it goes faster and lock the film ratio, blah, blah, blah. So this is a really small uh, frame, right, just to make it go faster. That's number one. Uh, for sort of animation, you don't want them to be rendering at full size because each frame is going to take forever. The second thing you check is go over here to output and make sure your sample level is set to something reasonable, like 10, right? For example, that's a really, really sort of quick quality, okay? Make sure multi light is off, you know, because for red, these sort of animations, you never want you know, this sort of setting to be on, right? You're not going to be adjusting the light uh, that way. Okay, so once that's set, then we go to record animation. Uh, press enter and let's say run animation, set this run animation to yes. <clears throat> uh, it'll make it easier. And then just sort of browse to you know where you want the exporter frames to be. Say enter. And it starts exporting each and every frame. And you'll see in that animate folder, basically it's adding each frame in automatically now. So that'll take a little while uh, for it to get to uh, 120. <clears throat> so let's uh, give it a second. Okay, now it's done exporting all 120 frames of those and it pops you this. And it will ask you whether or not you want to just render those animations right now. You can do it later. There's a way to do it, but 
you know, you've already done it that way, so just, yes, render these frames in Maxwell. So it will bring up the Maxwell render window, and you'll see that these are, because they're sort of really small, uh, they finish pretty quick, you know, SL7, 8, 9, so you can kind of see uh, each frame maybe takes, I don't know, 30 seconds. So this is the first frame, and time passed, yeah, it looks like somewhere around 30 seconds. So then it'll go to the next frame automatically, and it'll just like finish the whole sequence. So if you let it run, you know, uh, this may take, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, something like that, right? So it'll basically render and save each and every frame. And here, in that same folder as a uh, PNG or as an MXI file. Once that's done, uh, you can actually go here and say merge um, MXI, which uh, merge MXI sequence will actually merge it into an animation. Uh, just like the one I'm showing you right here. Now this is obviously a little bit larger, but this would be basically what it looks like. Right, very similar. But you don't, you just kind of let it run and go through this process. Um, and you get a lot of frames that you can basically stitch together into a simple animation. So that's uh, the idea, all right? That's uh, simple animations. Now this is very rudimentary uh, sort of keyframing, but uh, there's a lot sort of more sophisticated programs that you can use to do this kind of stuff. But for simple fly-throughs or you know, flybys, um, I think this is uh, adequate enough.